I have a vision of what I want it to be. So it started with, um, and you may know this, I'm just going to go in case some of you don't. It started with um, three years ago, we wrote a grant um, to do a cooperation with five other libraries, the New Braunfels, um, Bernie, Canyon Lake Library, Blanco, and Johnson City. And the grant was a library cooperation grant from the Texas State Library um, and through the um, IMLS, the Institute of Museum and Library Services. And we always have to mention this because they've given us a lot of money and they made all of this possible. And so the first year we purchased some materials and we bought, we, we, we weren't, we had a vision of the way it would work is we would buy this makerspace equipment. We would, at the time we were under construction, so we hoped we were planning to build a makerspace area at the library but we thought the equipment would rotate between the libraries and the libraries would each contribute some projects to do with that so that we could have a book that everybody could share or knowledge that everybody could share about this equipment. And so we, we bought 3D printers, we bought a large printer that does banners and things like that. We, we bought we started doing kits of like jewelry making. So the makerspace was not just 3D printers and um, equipment like that, that more STEM related equipment. It was also creative equipment. So we bought some Cricut makers, some uh, now we have scan and cuts, brother scan and cuts. So it's for making anything. And we have now a huge woodworking trailer that we kind of envisioned would go to each of these libraries and even at our library, we could open it up on a Saturday and put all the equipment out in the parking lot and let people teach people how to use woodworking equipment. And so we ended up getting three years of funding from the state for this. So we have a lot of equipment. We have resin printers, we have 3D printers and now that we are in the new building, um, well, we have CNC mills. We ha when we have audiovisual equipment that is really nice. Now, unfortunately, some of it is out at other libraries. So it's not always available at our library. But my vision is that someday people will be able to have an orientation to become members and understand the policies and rules of the makerspace. And once that they do that, they could, we would have somebody manning the makerspace and people could come in and use the equipment. Part of making in my mind is you are learning the equipment, right? I, I shouldn't have to teach you everything about that equipment. You should be able to learn the equipment yourself, but I have to provide some resources for you to do that. And so we are, I'm in the process now of trying to build a, the website up to have material on it that people could come in and say, I want to learn how to use this Cricut. I don't think I, there, there are so many YouTube videos out there. That is how we learn it. We also want to have classes on this but we want people to be able to come in and try it. You know, we don't want them breaking it and we don't want them doing dangerous things, but we do want them to be able to utilize this equipment. But at the same time, we can't provide training for all of that. As a maker, you should be able to come in and use it and learn to use it yourself. We are having some of our, um, volunteers and if, if any of you have interest in any of the equipment we have volunteers creating standard operating procedures for it um, maybe videos on it uh, we will link to other youtube videos but it would be nice to have our own videos and one of our staff members right now is taking some of the equipment and she's what we want to do is have people who are just certified so if you were certified on something that means you've shown an expertise that you are able to use this and you can come in and I wouldn't even have to be in the room with you because I know that you know how to use this equipment. 
I could, if you wanted to check it out for use in the library, I could put it in a study room for you and you would be able to use that equipment on your own without supervision. When you're just learning before you're actually certified, we would want somebody there in the room to make sure you're not breaking things and or being, you know, banging the needle into that thing. We have sewing machines. We have we have so much equipment. And so, you know, as far as like a sewing machine, if somebody wanted to come in and practice on a sewing machine and they weren't certified, I would like them to learn. I want them to be able to use that equipment to learn. But I would need to be in the room till I felt comfortable that they could take it in another room and use it themselves. So if you go to our website under resources, and this page is being redone, but right now it has um, the list of all the equipment we have. We have, we have so much cooking equipment. And in this last year, this, we just finished purchasing for this year. We added a Glowforge. It's a, a smaller laser. We have an Epilogue laser, but now we have this Glowforge, which our Rob, and Rob knows him, swears that this is the easiest laser that he's ever used in his life and it's wonderful and so we have that now we have what they were just putting together today the this pad caster kit which is actually an ipad a 10 inch ipad on that for um video cat um for it looks like we were talking about it today like you would do interviews with somebody it has a microphone and a light and you stand behind it and you're taping someone and you can film them doing um, a video of some kind. I, I kind of envision it as if we were interviewing people for their oral history or something like that. But it's it, the equipment and we have a huge variety. I mean, we have jelly printing things that people can use, kits that you can use to make um, mono printing. We have jewelry tools and what I'm trying to do right now is gather all this back from these other libraries because nobody's able to use it right now because nobody's doing any programming during this virus situation. So I'm trying to get it all back so that we can get it in kits that we can catalog it and you would be able to go into our regular catalog and see it. Now this equipment wouldn't be available for checkout to take home but you could come and use it at the library. So, and again, some of it may be checked out, but if it's in our catalog, you would be able to tell whether it was at our library or out at another library. So that is my plan right now. Um, does anybody have any questions so far or? So we are looking, I mean, if you have any interest in volunteering, we, I'm hoping that we will have, we're going to have to hire a new adult um, programming librarian, sadly, because our Debbie Solberg is having to leave us. And so when we do that, this person will be stationed, that will be their office is the maker space. And so we will have somebody available when people want to walk in and start using this equipment and have somebody Thanks. in the room. Susan, uh, I, uh, you and Car uh, Karen and I were were touring the um, library before it had been completed. You were generous enough to show us all the way around, and uh, we were looking at the maker space. Uh, I'm Michael, and this is Karen back here. <laughs> and uh, I uh, can't remember the fellow's name who was the uh, physicist. Yes, is Daniel. Daniel Bullock. Daniel. Oh, yes, Daniel. Is he still there? He is no longer with us. Uh, is he okay? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. We were worried about him. So, uh, anyway, uh, I had not heard about the uh, woodworking trailer you had mentioned. Well, Can with this year, we were able to purchase the trailer with this year's grant. So we had some woodworking equipment and you may, Daniel had some classes using the equipment, but this year we, we purchased a trailer so that it could, because the equipment's so large with woodworking, we wanted to be able to transport it to other libraries or have it in, you know, other places. So 
my, um, my husband has been instrumental in making sure that he, he built out this woodworking trailer for us, built a wonderful workbench that he attached many of the saws and things like that to. We can pull all that out. It's all on wheels. And he, he's got it all strapped in there so it, it travels nicely. And there's so much equipment. There's routers and lay, there's a lathe. There's several different types of saws. Um, what else do we have here in the woodworking trailer? <laughs> Drill press, hand planer. Hand planer. Um, so there's, there's, it's, it's a full workshop. It sounds very neat because so many people should be interested in woodworking around here, I would think. Yes. But we knew, and I think you might have been the one that mentioned it when you came on the tour, that makerspace is not going to be big enough. I know. Um, I, I remember somebody saying that on one of the tours, and you're right. There's no way that we can fit all of that woodworking tra um, equipment in that makerspace and have it available for people. So that was right. one of the reasons yeah. that we wanted the trailer. The trailer is a real good idea. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, as far as the uh, space, uh, uh, did you have to move the uh, large printer? Uh, last time I heard it was in the uh, uh, check-in area where you put new, where you checked in books. Yes. And so you would not believe I had to take shelves off of the shelves you know, the, the actual shelves and move all the books so that I could turn it to get it into the maker space. And I fought it for one afternoon, but it's in there and it will never come out of that room again. Yeah, yeah it's <laughs> so, super large. It's yes, it is, large. and it takes up the whole back of one wall in that room, but it's in there now. Uh, <laughs> so it's still available for people's use if they want to be trained on it? Yes. Yes, we need to, um, now that it's in that room, it's more easily accessible. So yes, if you want to learn the large printer, and, and Katie is an expert at it, and um, Rob also knows it really well, our Rob, and I think you know it, Rob, you've used it. Yeah, I, I was hoping to get some training. I mean, I, the last printer I worked with on it was an HP 5100, but this thing's probably 20 years old. That printer does circles around, because it cuts, it prints, it does a lot more. Yeah. Well, and we got a cutter. We got a cutter from U.S. Cutter that I don't think anybody has ever even used yet. We haven't, we haven't, nobody's had the time to figure out how to work it. So we really need help with, we have a lot of stuff and we yeah. need people who want to try to use this and learn how to do it. So and eventually, you... if, if they did, if they wanted to teach a class on it, that would be fantastic. Now, uh, you say that Daniel's no longer with you, but uh, you're looking for a person to uh, uh, be a supervisor because you're, you're, you sound like you are re required to be there and you need to do other things. You're, are you still the uh, director of the library itself? I, yes, I am still the director. So what we're looking, well, we had Debbie, I don't know if you've, heard of Debbie Silberg, our, our adult services librarian, is leaving us. And so we have decided to make this a full-time position since we had Daniel was part-time and Debbie was part-time. So we're thinking we will get a librarian who has some STEM interest in programming and also the crafty side. We're not sure who this person is going to be, <laughs> but uh, we're hoping to find somebody that will fit that and can have that as the, the makerspace as their office, like Daniel did once we opened. I don't know if you went in there after we opened. Uh, just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like it's a very difficult position to know all of that equipment. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but so think well, of all the fun things they get to play with. I know. <laughs> So. Anyway, uh, I should uh, stop talking and uh, you move on. Any other questions? Is there more I can tell you about it? Uh, this is Glenn Barrows. How are you doing? Great. Um, I have a, it's kind of an off the wall question. Um, from what I understand, the way you've explained things, um, you are sharing uh, 
a lot of equipment with five other locations. So it's kind of like split between six locations. I understand you're bringing it back to you right now during the current uh, lockdown crisis and all that, but eventually it's probably going to get spread back out again. So here's my off the wall question. How much funding would your library need for you to be able to have it all and let the rest of them split whatever's there? We, on this, the grant funding, we spent probably close to 250000 on this equipment. I mean, the first year was sixty-four thousand six or 75000 This year was sixty-four, and the last year was forty. So maybe one hundred fifty, two hundred. But um, we, we, we own, we are the owners of all this equipment. And, and the grant year ends the 30th of August. And the reason that I want to catalog it is we've been sending it out as labs. Um, so we've been sending out a lot of equipment to these other libraries. We don't envision sending the entire lab anymore. They're going to be able to check out, you know, if they want 10 jewelry kits they can take that. They won't need everything in the entire lab that we were sending before. So we will still have most of the equipment. One of the issues that we had was everybody found the laser to be very popular. So when the laser was checked out to other libraries, and it was we were doing it by quarters, so it was gone for a quarter. So what we kind of envision now is they wouldn't have it for more than a month. You know, I, there wouldn't be a reason for them to have it longer than that. And we would go every month and deliver and pick up whatever it was, it, you know, if it was the really large equipment. So. Susan, may I ask a question? Yes. Um, since Daniel's not there anymore, who was taking his position? Or, so is there, I was working on a project and it got postponed because of what we're going through. Now that I know Daniel's there. Who can I ask? It was a printing project. Who can I ask? I mean, I've got the file and everything. Who do I need to ask to complete? I, I mean, I know we're now in shutdown, but in the future, when the opportunity comes up. Well, I don't see why we still can't print right now. I mean, okay. we should be able to, and I believe we have a form. I need to see where that form's being okay. sent, what email. Um, right. Because Katie is still there, and Katie okay. actually ran most of the prints anyway. It, yeah, well, mine was actually not a printing, but a cutout. I was trying to make a big stencil. I, I was working on a project to make a stencil. And that, it works beautifully, but things got kind of changed, you know, world, world's changed. So. Okay. And was it on the large printer? Yes. Yes, it was on a large printer. And um, I, I, um, Danny was helping me with it, and we had to figure something out. But like I, like I said, when, when the whole COVID thing happened last spring, we just – you know, everything got put down, you know, because we just couldn't work on it anymore. So. Well, Rob, do you have my email? Do you want me to put that in? The uh, yeah, chat? you just can, if you put in the chat box, that'd be awesome. Okay. okay. Yeah, if anybody has any questions, just. Okay, um, that'd be awesome. Thank you. Susan, would you bring up the, I was looking at the Makerspace uh, web page and all of the the resources that are there kind of show people how they can find on the inventory. Maybe I was kind of yeah, looking at me, it kind of shows. Let me get back to the main page. So okay. this is our, our current website for it. And, you know, it talks about the policies and the inventory and the rotation schedule. And it's at our library. So if you're on our library page and you go to resources, you'll see MFPL Makerspace. And that gets you to this page. Now, right now, we don't have, um, these are the libraries that are sharing the makerspace equipment. And it'll tell you if you go to the schedule, what is out at another library. But if you just want to look at the inventory, um, general tools is, you can see that we have 3D design. Um, we have the 3D printers and we have more now. Uh, we have additional 3D printers. We have a resin printer uh, that we haven't added to this website. Uh, we have a candle and soap lab. This is the kind of stuff that I was saying I, I would make into smaller kits once I get it um, 
catalog and brought back to us because it's out right now. But for the digital AV, we had we have some interesting. If we, we even have a guitar, um, we kind of envisioned at some point maybe we could have a sound box and people would be able to come in and utilize this equipment. Uh, we have, this is the vinyl cutter. And that's what I was wondering, Rob, if that was something, if you're just cutting, would you use this? Yeah, um, Daniel and I are working, so basically it was gonna be like 50 inches. Basically we're just cutting it out. Partially had to do with design because um, long story short, I got a grant from the school I'm working at and I was trying to finish it, a project, and I was trying to make a, a, a stencil for the floor. And right. But um, yeah, that's what I was talking. Yeah, that's the printer. It's the one in that back room. I've seen it. Yeah, the cutter is back there too. Yeah. Yep. So um, anyway, if you guys want to look through this, we have a lot of a lot of equipment, and some of it is out at other. We have a lot of STEM things for classrooms. Some of it is out at other libraries right now, but it will be coming back. And in the woodworking, as far as woodworking goes, this is all of the woodworking equipment we have, which is now in wow. the trailer. So we have quite a bit. Um, um, Susan, I sent you a, mess, uh, uh, a message through the, the chat. I was trying to see if that email is still good. Um, the one that I put in there? No, the one I just sent you. Okay. It's maker at the library. Is that one still good? Yes. And, okay. and that should actually probably come to me now. It's not going to okay. go. So anything okay. that gets sent there would come to okay. me or to Rob, our Rob. Yeah, yeah, I know the other Rob. You're your tech guy. Yes. So, so any other questions on this? Okay, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I know you have a long program. Um, and everyone, this is something else that's kind of going to be um, helpful for y'all. You'll get a survey after class is over um, later on. And if you wouldn't mind filling out in there, there's, you know, if you enjoyed it, if you learned something, all those normal things. But there's ideas for classes. And if y'all, with some of y'all's technical mindsets, have ideas for some of these things that we could um, do or just anything at the library, we'd appreciate that there. There's also a spot for comments. So if you think of another question, um, you can definitely add that in there. And I can send it on to Susan. So. This has been great, Susan, and you no, know, you did great on the time, so we appreciate Thank it. Thank you so much for having me. We'd love to talk about the makerspace. Well, um, like Bethany said, we've talked about it at different meetings, but we didn't know much, and Rob knows more than we do, but because um, he's used it. Yeah. yeah we, we were just kind of general talking, <laughs> so... This is we always say it's so fun and neat and there's so much stuff in it, but how are we going to use it? And I think we're getting a lot closer to it with Susan cataloging all of that stuff. It's it's a project that the <laughs> yes, say, but it it's going to make it so easy for us to be able to use it and to check it out to their libraries and know where all of our stuff is. It's going to be awesome. So, so you, visualize always to go having, away. you visualize always having to share it with the other libraries, even if you have it exclusive at at yours? We, we would like to be able, because this is equipment, the whole point of the grant was that people, not all libraries can afford to buy this. If you think about Blanco and um, Johnson City, they won't be ever be able to afford this type of stuff, but we want to be able to have it available to them to teach their communities as well. So I, I would like to continue to share as long as we can and as long as it's useful i mean it over time these things will get older too right mm -hmm. but oh we've got drones we've got all kinds of things but um i i would like for all the communities and well we're, we're only sharing it within 40 miles of us so it's not going everywhere and so i i hope that we could continue this do you have or will you have a way of if we wanted to reserve or use a piece of equipment that we can schedule a time, say it's at Blanco, and so we know that it's not going to be back for a certain time, but we can go ahead and schedule, like going to the doctor or something. Yes, so we and, and we had, prior to Daniel leaving, we did have appointments with Daniel that you could 
do that. So once we have our new librarian, hopefully by the time we open, it would be the same type of thing where you could schedule it. And, and we want to be able to have other staff members available. And if you were to become certified on it, again, you wouldn't need somebody there with you. We could just put it in a room and somebody else could just let you in that room to mm -hmm. use it. So. Well, I'm a crafter, so I, I see the crock that, you know, everybody uses those if you're doing crafts and stuff, and that would be interesting. Oh, you and would, other things. Yeah, and we got the little one now. We got the Cr Cricut Joy. We've got the bigger <laughs> one. We also have the Scan and Cut, the Brother Scan and Cut. So we've got several. I think we'll always have at least one of those at our library. So, I, you know, that would be ideal. And to me, that's especially one of the ones where I would say, you need to come in and learn how to use it yourself and play with it because that's how you're going to learn. Mm -hmm. And there's not too much you can break on that. Um, yeah. Knock on wood. But, you know, I, that's the kind of thing that I would like to say, yes, come in, sit down here, spend as much time as you want learning it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, somebody's just in the room with you. They're not telling you how to do it. They may not even know how to do it, but you're having the opportunity to learn it yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I understand your cautiousness and just letting anyone come in and use them if they don't know what they're doing on it. Yeah, yeah. So, kind of like, would you let somebody come in and just start playing with your sewing machine? Of course Generally, not. <laughs> no. Not when they cost several thousand dollars. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. So. Or when it's the laser etcher engraver or something like that. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to say not anymore. <laughs> yeah. So... Yeah, right. you, still, you still have the scanner that'll scan books, but scan them flat. Yeah. You mentioned that one time because I was asking about if I have a book. Yes. Don't I scan, you can do. Okay. Yeah, we have the digital scanner. Okay. It's just good to know. Okay. Let's yeah. Super. So there's so much equipment. I mean, you really need to look through that website, and there's even more than is there on the website. So we need to update that. Okay. All right. Thank All right. you. Thank you very much.